Coming out of the Chicago summit in 2012, the nations and NATO made a conscious decision that based on Operation Unified Protector and lessons learned, that joint ISR is important, so important that they made it the number two priority across the alliance for investment and organizational construct. Our purpose here is to take that priority and realize it in an operationally relevant context. This trial is actually very critical. It's on the critical path for the development of NRF-16 and on from that from the provision of an enduring joint ISR capability for NATO. So we have a large number of nations taking part in this, and this was the first test of these nations testing their components inside the NATO infrastructure, which we will do again in 2015, and eventually so that we can roll this forward to AGS, the Alliance Ground Surveillance System. Now for the agency this is important because we're doing the target architecture piece for this trial, also for the NRF, also for the joint ISR capability and the AGS capability. We have a wide range of participants here in Unified Vision 2014. We have 18 participating countries that have contributed over 2,000 people uh, for our trial. Of those 2,000 people, we have wide representation between military personnel, civilians, and industry. There are a number of assets uh, participating in our trial. We have assets for the Air Component Commander, the Maritime Commander, and as well as the Land Component Commander. So the return on investment for the Alliance and for the national taxpayers is that each nation's contribution is given an opportunity to demonstrate its capabilities, to validate things that are of importance to the nation in a larger NATO Alliance context. So therefore, both the nation taxpayer and the NATO Alliance member is benefited through this investment in Unified Vision 14. What? So the agency has provided full spectrum support for Unified Vision 14. They are the architects of the target architecture that's being defined here. They've also been a principal in the development of the network and its administration, which is now distributed not just here in Erland, across over 1,500 accounts, but also across Europe and North America in 15 different locations. Uh, we started actually by developing the target architecture for this trial, which was how we would connect all the systems together and how they would work together. We then went on to build the core enterprise services or the entire infrastructure that supports this. We did it first in our laboratories here at the agency, then we transported it up to Norway and with the help of the Norwegian CIS units actually built the entire infrastructure that you see, including the, the server side and the client side. So the beauty of the target architecture that's being defined here is that it's dynamic. So depending on the mission need of the next campaign, it provides a full spectrum architecture where we can dynamically adjust what assets need to be where and when and have confidence that when they're in the network, they will conduct their missions as planned. When this trial took off, we knew that it was going to be quite complex because it has subject matter experts from all across the agency. We had people that supported the operations, both from the uh, provision of tactics, techniques and procedures documents all the way down to the technology. So a huge number of people supporting the production and then a large number also supporting the evaluation of this piece. The NCIA has been critical in providing core services that are being used in collection management as well as in exploitation. Uh, and dissemination. So without that support, there would have been a large gap in our ability to deliver a complete coordination, collection, information, resource management cycle here in UV-14. Now it's important to know that ISR is not used just for combat missions, but is also for disaster relief, peacekeeping, peacemaking, many of the different operations that we undertake in NATO. And we will continue to move this forward from UV-14 into that enduring capability. In light of the Whale Summit, where we highlighted joint ISR as one of these critical capabilities, and in light of the fact that the agency supports so many of these different areas inside joint ISR, we see this as one of the first steps in producing this enduring capability that's required by NATO.